Welcome to part two of our lesson on the area between two curves. So sometimes it might be much easier to work with the y values as opposed to the x values. So some regions are best treated by regarding x as a function of y. So the area A of the region bounded by the curves x is equal to f of y, x is equal to g of y, and the lines y is equal to c and y is equal to d. Well, f and g are continuous, and f of y is greater than or equal to g of y for y being between c and d inclusive. So that would be the integral from c to d of f of y minus g of y, dy. And we could see that going on in our picture here. We have x is equal to g of y as the blue curve, x is equal to f of y as the pink curve, and c and d to show that region with that delta y in there to denote that rectangle. So in order for us to actually integrate, we let x sub o represent the right boundary, which in this case is our function y is equal to, uh, excuse me, x is equal to f of y. And x sub l represents the left boundary, which was x is equal to g of y. Then the area is just the integral from C to D of the right boundary minus the left boundary dy. So for example, find the area enclosed by the line y is equal to x minus one and the parabola y squared is equal to two x plus six. I have that graph down here on the bottom. Um, when we solve these two simultaneously, we get our intersection points to be at the points of negative one comma negative two and f five comma four. Uh, we could solve both of these curves for x. So from that, we would get that the, the left endpoint of this would be one half times y squared minus three, which is the blue curve in my picture. And the right endpoint would be equal to y plus one, which is this pink line on here. And because of the intersection, the other um, portion of these lines that we need, are y is equal to negative two and y is equal to four. So putting it all together, our area would be, um, if we use the x values for this, we would get something that we would need multiple areas for, since as we can see, it does indeed go below the x-axis. So we would need two integrations involved in this. But if we chose the y values, it makes it a lot nicer. This would be a is equal to the integral from negative two to four of the right region minus the left region, dy. So integral from negative two to four of, this would be y plus one minus a half times y squared minus three, dy. So from that, and let me just give myself more room to write this. This would become the integral from negative two to four of negative a half y squared plus y plus four dy. And that is negative a half times y cubed over three plus y squared over two plus four y. And this whole thing will be evaluated between negative two and four. So negative one sixth times 64 plus eight plus 16 minus four thirds plus two minus eight. And when doing that, 
we get ourselves a value of 18 for that blue shaded area in our picture. So for example four, I have this graph shows velocity curves for two cars A and B that start side by side and move along the same road. We want to know what does the area between the curves represent and use this midpoint rule to estimate it. So using a conversion of one mile per hour being 5,280 divided by 3,600, this is feet per second, and, and based upon these points from this graph I have in the upper right hand corner, we can then make this table of the velocity for the A function, velocity for the B function, and the difference. For values of time between zero and 16 while going up by two. So we are going to use a sample, an N, excuse me, of four, and delta T to be also that value of four. So the midpoints that we are going to use are going to be T sub one bar is equal to two. T sub two bar is equal to six. T sub three bar is equal to 10. And T sub four bar is equal to 14. And this will be calculated as the integral between 0 and 16 of v sub a minus v sub b dt. And that's approximately delta t times, this will be 13 plus 23. It's from here, 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 and here. 13 plus 23 plus 28 plus 29. So four times 93, that's 372 feet in this particular instance. And we have one more example, this one. Find the area of the region bounded by the parabola, y is equal to two x squared, and the tangent line to the parabola at five comma 50 and the x axis. So we need that tangent line equation. So the for the slope of that, we take the derivative of y, which is 4x, plug in 5. That'll be y. Um, this is y prime of 5. That'll be 4 times 5, or 20. And to get the actual equation, that's y minus 50 is equal to 20 times x minus 5. Solving that, we should get an equation of y is equal to 20x minus 50. And it turns out that it's uh, much easier to do this calculation, much easier if we took y values as opposed to x values, since we would have two integrations and, well, that's never helpful. Um, to get the equation solved for x, um, the tangent line one, this would be x is equal to 1 20th times y plus 50. And the parabola, y is equal to 2x squared. This would be x is equal to the square root of y divided by 2. So the area we are going to use for this, since we are going to use between zero and 50, since we have the tangent line being five comma 50, that should be where they intersect. So 50, and this will be 1 20th times y plus 50 minus the square root of y over 20 dy. This is 1 40th times y squared plus 5 halves times y minus 4 thirds times a half of y, half of y to the 3 halves power 
And this will be evaluated between zero and 50. So 125 over two plus 125 minus 500 over three. And this makes 125 over six as this blue area on this graph. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.